point, I decided that I would not be like her. No, I couldn't be. But sometimes that that sickness can live inside of you, and it gets really hard to lift your head up in the morning. And you spend nine months with it living inside of you, breathing your air, eating your food, Coexisting, and then suddenly it's out. It's real. And the only thing left inside of you is a ghost. And it, the kid, it's not what you expected because it burps and it cries and it shits and it screams. And yes, you know, yes, you expected this sort of a thing, but somewhere down inside when it was inside of you coexisting in perfect harmony that expectation fades and your husband loves her more than he loves you and again I'm alone forgotten an afterthought waiting for Tom or my mother to notice me waiting with wine glass full of skim milk because there was a ghost between he and I. And there was a distance that was cold and intangible and my teeth would chatter whenever I would touch it. I buckled myself in, even though I already knew, even though I already decided, I made sure I buckled my seatbelt and that he did too. Safety first, I told him. If I was alone, screaming, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Slow down. Stop the car. Slow down. I just pushed down a little harder on the gas and we drove right into it and fuck. Fuck, it was cold. Freezing. And Tom, he kept trying to get the seatbelt off, but that's not easy when you're freezing cold and running out of air. And me, I just relaxed made it like I always do. Life is 99% waiting and 1% having. If I could have, I would have bottled his blood and worn it around my neck. Before we went for the drive, I napped. And when I napped, I dreamt that I saw a fisherman on his boat in the water. And I thought, I want to marry that fisherman. <laughs> and that I would smell like him. My fingertips would smell like cold ocean water and fish. And he, well, I think he caught me looking at him from across the ghost between us because our eyes locked for a minute. And the sun was right above and right behind him. And I couldn't see his face, just the silhouette of something strong, something handsome, and I thought I could be that fisherman's wife. I could ride out under the water with him and rub his shoulders while he's at the wheel and cook him the fluke and the flounder that he'd catch. And maybe we'd ride the waves to Hawaii because I said I've always wanted to try the mahi-mahi, and he says if you want to try the mahi-mahi, I will catch you the mahi-mahi. <laughs> Even if we have to fish at dawn. And so at dawn we'll fish. We'll stand there in our robes laughing and drinking coffee as the sun comes up all around us because it does that on the ocean. And it's like I've just been dropped. Me. Right here. Right smack in the middle of this earth, in the middle of this moment, with my fisherman and his blood. 
blood around my neck. And everything is rich. The clouds in the air are saying please and thanks. And I'm smiling because the cold feels wonderful on my toes. And I've gotten used to the smell so ripe and alive that it is so strong. Its legs are so tall that it will never go anywhere. It will stay. It will linger. It will wrap its arms around me and love me. <laughs> love me. Love me. <laughs> and when we step off the boat, the sun in our eyes, and the ground against our feet. I put my hand in Tom's. We walk to the car, and I drive. <laughs>